Hello, welcome back to another lecture. In this lecture, we're going to talk about designing a column. To design a column effectively, you got to understand how column uh, reacts under loading. If you have a short column, they probably be the strongest and they fail when, when the stress you apply exceeds the stress of the material. And we learned that a long time ago, F is equal to uh, P over A. If this force is bigger, comes out, this number comes out bigger than the uh, allowable stress in the material, it fail. But when a column gets longer, no longer this uh, equation applies. What happened is you know, something called buckling. It's a sideway uh, deflection. If I pull on a buckle, you know, it buckles like that. And that column can fail a lot quicker with less force than what the design material is for it. And it makes a big difference how it's supported on the end, whether it's a pin or is it fixed or you have an intermediate support. And this example is a good example right here. We can, uh, we can look at the, uh, this column. It's a six by six timber. The uh, dressed actual size is five and a half by five and a half. And we're going to find out what is the maximum load we can put on this column if the column was five feet long all the way to 20 feet long, 15 feet, 10 feet and uh, kind of give us idea and to design a column is basically trial and error you go ahead pick a size and you go through these equations and if it comes out as fine then you go to the next one an experienced designer can use a cylinder ratio to its advantage and design this so let's go ahead continue with uh, with this column first thing we're going to do take a look at the table uh, in NDS we're going to go for the NDS uh, code look at take a look at NDS uh, 4.31 and our F prime C comes out to, I'm going to write it down, equal, uh, or we can just basically say F prime C is equal F of uh, C, make this star on top of it, and time CP. And most of these are going to become one because we're in a dry condition anyway, except for uh, duration. Because we're using a snow loading duration, and take a look at it on a board, and therefore our uh, CD comes out to 1.15. And if you go ahead and uh, simplify this, it becomes uh, 9. And we can find out uh, FC from a table 4D. And let's take a look at that on the table. And FC is equal 975. So therefore we have 975. Uh, time uh, 115 and then time bunch of ones and CP so this number comes out to 975 times 115 makes it 1121 so they become uh, 1121 uh, CP and therefore I can say this become 1121 CP and my F prime C comes out to 1121 F prime C star 1121. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look for is the, uh, the effective length uh, for our column. Uh, remember in the problem we said the column is pinned in both ends. That means the end of the column is restrained. It's, it's, uh, it's pinned. And when we look at this chart right here, we can find K factor based on here. If our column is fixed end or is it a pin, uh, your k is going to be different. What I mean by that, for example, this is a fixed end column, is fixed at one end, and this is a column is pinned. So our column is pinned on both ends. That means our k value is equal to one. So the distance between point zero of moment in the column is for whether we find uh, our uh, effective length. So our le comes out k times l, which is one times our length, which is we have a variable length from five to twenty. The next thing we're going to go, we're going to go find a cylinder ratio. The cylinder ratio is basically uh, LE divided by D. And when you look at your column, make sure you take the, uh, the width of the smallest cross section. So you have a D1 and D2. This is based on NDS figure 3F. And you pick out the uh, D2 because you're looking for the larger value of cylinder ratio. Uh, if we go into uh, uh, NDS right here at uh, section 3.7.13, for solid column with a rectangular cross section, the cylinder ratio LE over D shall be taken as the larger of the ratio LE1 over D1 or LE2 over D2. That's what it means. 
Okay, let's go back to the board. LE is equal to uh, the length itself, which is a KL. K is equal to 1 and for a pin. And therefore, it's going to be a 5 foot and 10 foot and 15 foot and 20 foot, as we said. So our LE is going to be like that. D, and what is LE? And let me write this down. Uh, make a line here for five foot column. Our LE is going to be uh, five times 12 divided by D was five and a half. Uh, okay, 5.5. So now we're going to have 10.9. Uh, and per same spec, that's got to be less than or equal 50. It checks out. So for 10 footer, it's going to be uh, 10 times 12 divided by 5.5, and that will give me 21.8, which is less than 50. And for 15 footer, it is uh, 15 times 12 divided by 5.5, and that comes out to 32.7. Still less than 50 is okay. And for 20 footer, it's gonna come out to, uh, you do the calculation yourself, 43.6. 43.6 and less than 50, basically it's a 20 times 12 divided by uh, five and a half. And uh, now we have that. And the next thing we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna calculate critical buckling design value. Take a look at section 3.7. I'm going to go ahead and make a line here since I need boardroom. And, uh, and that's based on the Euler equation because we can no longer can use that equation because of the buckling. So our, uh, our critical buckling design value is F C equal uh, 0.822 E prime minimum and divide that by uh, L E divided by uh, LD squared. Uh, no, no, divided by D, the whole thing squared. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and uh, calculate for a five footer. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a chart using this equation uh, for five foot column. Uh, F, uh, well, let me do this something different. Okay, that's for our LE and FCE. Let's make this. Okay, so if you go ahead, plug five in here, be 0.822 our E prime from table 4D, table 4T E prime minimum came out to be uh, 580,000. And uh, because E prime minimum was E time CD, C, uh, what was it, CD, I got it, I got it, CD, CMCT, CMCT, and that's going to become 580,000, and uh, that's a 580,000 times one, so this is a 580,000 PSI. So now we have that. We're going to go as a 0.882 times 580,000 PSI. Divide that by LE. Our LE was uh, uh, for 5 footer was 10.9. 10.9 squared. And therefore, my answer comes out to uh, uh, 4,013. For 5 footer, it's 4,013. And if I put a 10 footer in, apply it to this equation, and you can go ahead and double check my calculation, and that should come out to 1,003. Uh, yeah, say that again. For 15 footer, it's going to come out to uh, um, 445. Interesting, huh? And for 20 footer, it's going to come out to be uh, 251 p.
PSI. So if we go ahead and plug 5 footer in this equation, for 5 footer, LE over D was 10.9. You put 10.9 there, you get that answer. And that's how we got this answer. You can put this in the Excel sheet and bang, in two seconds you get all that answer. So now we have that. The next thing we want to go ahead, take a look at the section 3.7. We're going to calculate our adjustment factor CP. And equation for CP is equal. Uh, for this equation, it's still going to continue. Minus square root of, uh, same thing right here, 1 plus F C E divided by F star C divide the whole thing by 2 times C and square it out and minus um, F C E divided by F prime C and um, If prime C star and divided by C. So this long equation, we have FCE came out to be uh, our FCE is right here. And our FC prime came out to be 1121. And you put this in Excel, and all you have to do, this is going to be 0.8 anyway, and it can figure out, and for a different uh, number, for 540, you put 403 divided by, um, divided by uh, F prime C. Okay, for five footer, we have one plus FCE is 413. Divide that by F prime C, we said 1121. Okay, and divide that by uh, two time 0.8. Okay, minus square root of uh, the same thing here, whatever comes out to, which is 1 plus 413 divided by 1121 divided by 2 times 0.8 square root of the whole thing minus uh, 43, 4013 divided by uh, 1121 Divide the whole thing by uh, 0.8. And that comes out to 0.34. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing here. And we're going to make our chart. And for a 5 footer, LE and CP. And uh, plug it in here. For a 5 footer, we got 0.934. And for a 10 footer, we get. Uh, 0.651 for 15 we get uh, 0.357 and for 20 we're gonna get 0.212 and that's our CP and let me erase this right here so, so now we have um, our CP now we when all this whole calculation we did all this calculation so we can find CP. And therefore, we're going to come ahead and calculate FP prime. So we're going to have for FP prime, for five footer, we're going to get uh, F prime C, which is 1121. Okay, multiply by CP. CP is 0 0.934. 0 0.934, and that comes out to uh, uh, 1047 PSI. And for 10 footer, we're going to get same thing. It's going to be 1121 time different factor which was uh, 0.651 and that comes out to 730 psi 
and for 15 footer we're going to have same number time 0.357 I end up with uh, 400 psi and uh, for 20 footer we're going to get 1121 same thing multiply by 0.212 it's interesting how it reduces as it as it get higher. So I got 238. And uh, let me erase this right here and we continue. And P is equal. It's going to come out F prime C multiplied by uh, the area, which is BD in this case. So F prime C for five footer is different and that's going to be we're going to say uh for five feet column we're going to have f prime c is 1047 multiplied by 5.5 .5 times 5.5 .5. that's the area of our column because our column is six by six and the actual size is five and a half by five and a half so that number, it will give me uh, 31,700 pounds. Okay, 31,700 pounds. So now for a 10 footer, I got a 730 multiplied by the same thing, and that's going to give me uh, 22,100. That is a pound. All right, this marker is given up. Let me change. So for a 15 footer, I have a 400 psi multiplied by the area, which is five and a half times five and a half, and that will give me a 12,100. And finally, for a 20 footer, we have a 238. 238. You know what time you're supposed to go to the dentist? Tooth hurry. So this is 238. You don't have to go to dentist. Multiply by 5.5 uh, 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 times 5.5, and that will give you 7,200 pounds. Really interesting because it tells you, you, you as an engineer or, or somebody that's calculating these uh, uh, maximum uh, load, actual load at that and a timber of six by six or actual size five by five it can take and somebody asks you how much if you give them a wrong answer they say yeah okay uh, it can take 31,700 pound but if that person uses it as a, for 20 foot long section put a balcony or something on top of it that's gonna fail because buckling is a huge issue unless you brace that column sideways to a point that buckling is not an issue Okay, so uh, good luck.